TV trash. Well, it's the first month of the year, and that means we usually look back on history. And this time, we are really digging into the history of one of the most dirty, underhanded genres of all time. The Kitty Cartoons! The relationship between television networks and merchandising has always been close, confrontational, complicated, and whatever other C word you can come up with. So many of us online have talked countlessly on end about how this was most blatant in the 1980s when so many cartoon shows were blatant half-hour toy commercials, even the ones many of us still remember fondly. Of course, it's not like times before that were much better, as in the years beforehand, television creators were so under the thumbs of parental watch groups, we either had to settle for god-awful cartoons featuring celebrities as superheroes or whatnot, or even worse, saccharine pseudo-educational schlock that told us you were the bad guy if you dared not agree with the collective. But just when did all that begin? Well, ladies and germs, today on TV Trash, we bring you the show largely responsible for commercialized cartoons getting banned for so many years. This is Linus the Lionhearted. It's no secret that when animation moved to television, two things took over the aspects of creation in order to be profitable. One, these shows had to be made as cheaply as possible. And two, the producers and networks had to find some way to get as much supplementary income as possible. Premiering in 1964, Linus the Lionhearted originally aired on CBS and was the creation of advertising mogul Ed Graham. It actually featured a pretty remarkable voice acting cast that included Carl Reiner, Ruth Buzzy, Jonathan Winters, Jerry Stiller, and his wife, Ann Mira. With how much that had to cost them, how in the world could a show like this make money? Well, that's the sordid tale of the show. Let's get into it. So the series is centered around our title character, Linus the Lion, who rules over the jungle and his friends, Billy Bird, Rory Raccoon, So High, Lovable Truly the Mailman, and Sugar Bear. And judging by just a certain one of those characters alone, I'm sure quite a few of you have already guessed the secret of this show. Yep, this show was more or less created by General Foods to shell breakfast cereal. Pretty much every major character in the show was a mascot for one of the post-brand cereals that General Foods made. Linus himself at the time was the mascot for Crispy Critters, though he was originally created in 1959 for the short-lived Cheerios knockoff Heart of Oats. Sugar Bear, as we know, was the mascot for Sugar Crisp. Rory shilled Post Toasties, So High pushed Rice Crinkles, and Lovable Truly was the Alphabets Man. Yep, even your child memories of sitting in front of the TV with a bowl of sugary breakfast food was all the creation of marketing hacks. Your childhood is completely dead. I'd like to at least say none of the episodes were made specifically to push any of the cereals, but... Yeah, that's not the case. The most blatant of shilling likely came from the cartoons involving Sugar Bear, as many of them involved his confrontations with Granny Goodwitch and his constant trying to get her sugar golden crisp. I can't get enough of that sugar crisp, keeps me going strong. He's catching up. Better hide my sugar crisp quickly. He'll never find it now. Sure knows how to start his day a little bit better. Gee, these stories sure look familiar. Yeah, we'll get there. 
outside of that, the main story from each episode usually involved Linus telling some story to his friends while sitting on his barber chair that passes for a throne. Hey, as long as he's not talking about him and his buddies trying to destroy a ship filled with drugs only for them all to get killed by Kaiser Sose, I'm good. For what it's worth, every episode had about five to six stories in them, usually one for each main character. So yeah, I'm guessing this cartoon probably had a ton of writers. And I wouldn't be surprised if they all got paid in serial. Most of the stories involving Linus are usually about him being constantly harassed by characters like Billy Bird, who pretty much act like Chip and Dale or that bee that kept making Donald Duck's life hell. <laughs> oh, wait, Lee. <laughs> Of course, Linus isn't the only creature Billy Bird loves to bother. He also is an antagonist to Rory Raccoon, a wannabe do-gooder who tries good deeds like protecting the cornfields. So Rory tries to get rid of him with tricks like making him think he's having a nervous breakdown. You don't look too good. You've been taking care of yourself while I was in St. Louis. St. Louis? But, but you just said... Hold it, pal. I'll be right back and tell you all about Cleveland. Boy, maybe I've been working too hard lately. Yeah, this bird is a bit of a dick. As for the So High stories, let's just say I'm better off not showing them if I don't want certain people on the internet on my ass. This show was definitely huge, and one of the first cartoon shows to be heavily merchandised and not just with the sugary breakfast they were meant to shill. The series got its own comic book line, board games, and even its soundtrack on album. Man, Transformers must be green with jealousy at how much better this show was at shilling itself. But when and how did it all get shut down? Well, that's where everything gets kinda convoluted. Now, the exact time that Linus the Lionhearted was cancelled may be up for debate if we go by our current interpretation of that term. Technically, the show stopped making original episodes at the end of 1965 and was soon dropped by CBS. ABC picked up the reruns a year later and colorized them, which is why the episodes I found have varied between monochrome and color, but have mostly been the latter. Those reruns aired on ABC until September of 1969, and that's where things get confusing. The general belief is that at some point in 1969, the FCC passed new rules stating that TV shows aimed at children could not feature characters that were also in commercials that aired on the same program. However, from what research I was able to do, I couldn't actually find any info verifying that such official regulation was passed at the time. In fact, no such official regulation came into effect until the Children's Television Act of 1990. So just what did happen? It looks like this may not have been the action of the FCC, but was rather self-imposed restrictions placed by the National Association of Broadcasters. In 1970, the group Action for Children's Television did petition for the FCC to completely ban commercials from airing on children's programming altogether, but of course the FCC never did so. Suffice it to say, it looks like the FCC never officially passed any regulations banning cartoons that were glorified commercials, but they did more or less pressure the networks into enforcing their own rules keeping such programs off the airwaves. 
There were some attempts to circumvent this, most notably when Mattel tried to create a cartoon about their Hot Wheels car toys and simply aired Hot Wheels ads on every show on ABC Saturday mornings except the actual Hot Wheels cartoon, only for ABC to drop the show when rival toy companies started complaining. So in the days since I first released this video on Patreon, I've been informed that the FCC actually did pass such legislation in 1974 in the form of the Children's Television Report and Policy Statement, which did order the restriction of what was known as host selling, where the characters in a show would feature any product that the show's creators were selling as merchandise in real life. This was viewed as a TV show becoming recognized as a full-length commercial in the eyes of the FCC. I honestly don't know why my own research failed to turn up these rules, but the fact that they were passed five years after Linus the Lionhearted went off the air lends me to suspect that other factors in the years since played a part and not just Linus the Lionhearted. That or the FCC was just real damn slow to officially do anything, which I can also believe. But one way or the other, it became clear that constant hassles from the FCC, parent groups, and other advertisers made making such shows not worth the effort, and shows like Linus the Lionhearted faded away for a number of years. With their show gone, most of the characters and their serials were soon phased out of existence, with Sugar Bear and Golden Crisp pretty much being the sole survivor. Though I do recall Crispy Critters getting a brief revival in the late 80s, this time with a new mascot simply called Crispy. And it's not like the notion of creating ridiculous cartoon adventures for cereal and other food mascots completely went away. They just made their way into the actual commercials themselves. Yep. Those of us who grew up with all those commercials about the Trix Bunny or Lucky the Leprechaun, you can thank this show for their inspiration. So, Linus the Lionhearted was even more blatant at being a glorified commercial than anything toy commercials produced in the 1980s. But was it still a good show? No. Even if you take out the product placement, the animation remains some of the cheapest out there, and the pacing often really drags in a lot of stories. Which just makes it even worse when you remember there were often half a dozen stories in one show. It looks like the creators looked at several Disney or Warner cartoons from 20 to 30 years ago and decided to make their own versions with their own characters with about a fraction of the budget. And no, I don't buy the excuse of it was the time period and everything was cheaply made back then. The Flintstones, Rocky and Bullwinkle. There are cartoons from this time that remain beloved by many today because those behind the production still put out effort to do the best job possible with the tools they had. It's clear everyone involved with this, including the well-known voice actors, were only in it for a paycheck. And the result is something with no energy whatsoever that I doubt could have even kept kids from this time period attentive to it. And really, when you look at how the object of the show was ultimately to sell cereal, it really makes you wonder just how well these cartoons really would have worked. But this isn't even the worst case of a show that completely failed at trying to show off the very product it was trying to shill. See you next time!